I almost wanted to think Wally was a ghost, but I said, girl, you're reaching too far with that one. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As the title tells, we're talking about Atlanta season three, episode five. Least favorite episode this season so far, but it was still good. A lot of laughs, very light. There won't be too many theories or predictions in this one. Compared to last week, they took it easy on us, but there's still a lot to discuss. So as per usual, I'm gonna start off with the plot with you. This episode opens up with a pan through the venue. It's giving ghostly type of vibes. I don't know why Atlanta's been so eerie this season. We overhear Ern talking to someone asking for ginger beer, not ginger ale. I know that's right, ginger beer all day, every day especially when it's my great grandma's homemade one, A1. This was me watching the episode after I heard that I'm like, I know it's gonna be good. The episode was still good, I just, it was the ending for me. That twist was too predictable, but we'll get into it. Switch scenes, Darius clears out the table to pull out the blueprint to show there's missing rooms in the venue. Don't go looking for things like that, Darius. He's my favorite character, he's my everything, but that, I can't relate. Paperboy's chilling backstage. They're talking about the strip club, paying homage to Atlanta, laughing at the thought of going to one in Europe after the show because they don't compare. Then I see a dusty yellow beanie in the back. Why is Socks there? I said the same thing when they burst out laughing in the van at the end of episode three. Homeboy is allowed backstage now? What transpired since last episode to now that I missed out on? As soon as things went down, I pointed fingers at him. Can't trust a man who doesn't even tell you how he spells his name. It's not the socks on your feet, that's all we know. As the plot goes, Paperboy meets up with a Make-A-Wish kid. I don't see well, but that was alcohol he gave him, right? Ern tells Paperboy it's time to go out, but just before that, Paperboy asks Ern, you good? And then Ern gets called and whisked away to go do something, but he says, yeah, he's straight. I have some thoughts on that moment, but we'll talk about it when we get to the theory section. Now it's time for Paperboy to perform. They're backstage. Darius gets DMX Deacon on him and prays. Then he's just about to go out and some other kid, who we saw in the first scene, get past the security checkpoint without being checked. Race relations are always here to spot the situation. He's on stage hyping him up, and I was like, is this kid the opening act? What's up with that? Clearly he's not, because Ern gets him off stage so Paperboy can perform. Then we find out after the show, the phone is missing. That gold phone Paperboy was typing on earlier is gone. We say, okay, we'll get you a new one. That's how it is when you're rich, right? But he says, no, it's not about the phone, it's what's on the phone. In that moment, I'm getting nude leaks tease, but something in my soul said no. Atlanta's a little deeper than that. This may be a light episode, and it was, but we're gonna go a little deeper than that. I'm sure a lot of people watching this were like, well, I'm sure it's on the cloud. And as soon as they said they don't do the cloud, and Darius is like, that's how they track you. I said, I feel you, fam. I'll explain another time, but I'm the same. I don't have anything on the cloud. We need this phone because what's on it is important, and it's gone, gone. Why is that that Darius says, what about that weird kid? He's not a weird kid, he has cancer. This is so inappropriate. So, Ern calls someone, they're like, yes, the kid is leaving, he had a cancer attack. They're like, yo, that's not even a real thing. Ern goes out, the kid's on a stretcher. Does he not pop up, I'll do anything for paper boy. <laughs> I just, the dark humor is always present. For what seemed to be three minutes, was probably only three seconds, was Ern's hesitation to approach the kid and he still goes up. I said, please don't say anything. Cameras are rolling. He still goes up, lifts up the kid's feet. <laughs> oh my gosh, sometimes I laugh at the show because it's so stupid and silly and it's just what I need. The show understood the assignment. Sometimes you just need pure entertainment. It doesn't have to make sense and this episode was exactly that. So the kid doesn't have it. How do you know? I just I'm thinking let it go. I'm always writing for Darius, but this hypocrisy was not for me when he turned and said, why'd you do that? Or it's like, you're the one who told me to go after the kid. Then it was Socks, it had to be Socks, who said, what about the one that was on stage? And they all think, oh. And in that moment, that was my red flag number one. Why are you pointing fingers? Last time I checked, you're new to the crew. Why isn't anyone asking you? Plus, I don't trust you. You were virtual signaling in the last episode. You started a whole kerfuffle had the whole crew sick on Miss Korea. I don't know why they go off of Sock's hunch. 
Ern goes to talk to the building manager. We find out that that's his nephew by marriage. I don't know how they do it over here, but here a nephew is a nephew, not twice removed by marriage or any of that. Ern sees the kid's resume on the table, calls a number. Him and Paperboy calmly ask the kid. They're trying to coax him to come back. Then Socks goes on 1,000, not level 100, level 1,000, cursing and talking about he's the white Liam Neeson. I said, come again. I love how they broke the fourth wall in this moment and the characters were like, wait, what? White Neil, Liam Neeson. Like, what are you saying? You know, my favorite character, Darius, is sitting there namaste all day. I thought that was very telling. Why do they go on a wild goose hunt for a phone that I knew from moment one socks picked up? The only thing I was trying to figure out the whole episode is if there's any hints or clues to why Homeboy pulled it up. And I will talk to you in the theories of the only theory that I can reach for. I mean, my arm is hurting from arm day yesterday, but could also be because I'm reaching with this, but we'll see. Luckily, the kid comes to meet Paperboy and they're like, why did you come if you don't have the phone? He says, well, like you said on the phone, this is my opportunity to meet Paperboy. Turns out he's a super fan, a stan. He starts reciting some Shakespearean poetry. I say, what's going on? I'm not the only one. It turns out only Paperboy knows this because it's his lyrics from his unreleased first blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, is this an indication that the kid has the phone or is Socks texting him the lyrics from the phone? Because I just could not let go of the fact that I do not trust Socks. I don't know what it is. Okay, good cop, bad cop. Darius says, understated cop, I feel you. They go in, as soon as they sit down, the kid calls their bluffs. So you're gonna do good cop, bad cop, and record what I'm saying? Mm -mm. It's just rationalized, Socks wants to come in. You can hear him cursing from the outside the room. The kid is like, can I have one call? You're not in jail. He reads out the number, it's 404, and they bleep it out, and people are like, that's my number. They drape him up, and he passes gas. It's a slapstick humor for me. Sometimes you just need something light, airy, not too much thought, that's what this episode gave. When they're outside, they're asking the uncle, building manager, what's the story, what's the sitch? Cause the kid is 32. <laughs> and I don't know if he's like a supreme troller or if he's actually 32, cause you know, I'm part of that crew of people who look a lot younger than they are. So I said he could be 19, but he could also be 32. When the uncle said, I haven't seen him in 15 years and he was in juvie, I said, so he was in there from four? Make it make sense. It's just Paperboy and Wiley. And in that moment, I see a lot of mirror energy going on. I found it very beautiful, very eloquently done, very simple on the top. You don't really have to get too deep with it. Everything that was said spoke for itself. They had a moment where Wiley is telling Paperboy why he connected and sharing kind of the origin story. And then Paperboy is sharing the rut he's been going through that I'm sure a lot of musicians do. And I love how revealing in this moment, he shares that I need the phone back. It's not because I got nudes on there are numbers I want to save. It's because I made music and I haven't done that in months. And I thought that was very beautiful and the facial expressions of both of them, incredible actors. I don't think I've ever seen Paperboy that serious and stoic before. And whoever the actor that portrayed Wiley is, is incredible. He was giving creepy, crazed, fanatical, but grounded at the same time. I can't explain it. The part that had me, I fell out. I said, Atlanta, you're sick, was when he pulls out his phone with a swiftness. And I said, isn't this a kid that doesn't have a phone, doesn't have a number? Now he has a phone to be texting somebody, puts the phone back, no problems. Paperboard doesn't call him out about it. Then his uncle comes through with a guitar. You mean to tell me he texted his uncle, yo, run me my guitar real quick, and he actually came and brought it? He starts to strum, and I say, okay, is this going to be a moment, or is this going to be like L.A. and Euphoria? We don't want it to drag on too long. And the music was actually good. I was wondering if the melody he was singing was actually the tune that Paperboy made, and that's why Paperboy let him leave like that, or if it's because the lyrics really resonated. There were so many similarities. It reminded me of Eminem Stan, where you have this crazed fan. Because after all, when they first met, he started sounding all Shakespearean saying, to die at the hands of paper boy. I said, boy, what are you saying? I said, this is gonna get creepy real quick. But luckily it didn't come to that. Instead, it was just a moment where I feel like paper boy saw himself or maybe finally saw how much success he's acquired and whether or not he really wants that life. Back in the day, I used to love listening to or watching old musicians, not podcasts, cause they didn't exist, but interviews. 
And they would always say their sophomore album was their most raw. That's when they had to prove themselves, but they didn't have the backing of the music industry. So it was them in their element. But of course, with time, they shift and change. I wonder if that's happening for Paperboy on this round two, this next lap of his Europe tour. Is he becoming more dissonant with who he was and why he's there? Does he even have the love anymore? Is he no longer creative because he doesn't connect? What is it? We have that moment where Paperboy asks, Aaron, you good? That to me symbolized open lines of communication. They're family at the end of the day, but Ern's so caught up in the mix, and we're going to talk about him in a second, that you get it gets lost in translation. I feel like that was a moment for Paperboy to speak on how he's been feeling, maybe some of his regressions or uncertainties about where he's at or maybe if it's for him anymore. And Ern obviously is consumed by whatever is happening or not happening with Van, but he's not communicating that either because he's in the mix of things. So before I get on to theories, let me just wrap up the plot because you can tell I'm super hyped to talk about what I thought of this episode. <sighs> they all walk up to get into the tour bus, feeling defeated. Darius didn't get to go on his adventure. Socks is apologizing because I don't know if I mentioned this, but one of the times when they went outside to regroup, Socks was just about to drop the end bomb heavy and bomb i said you're playing with fire why don't they leave him at the venue leave him in budapest i'll kind of swept it on the rug in my opinion for everything else that's happened that was a thing he let go it kind of shows you the either defeat exhaustion or misstepping of giving people passes. major plot twist this is why i didn't like the episode it was so predictable when he pulled out the gold phone then he tossed it out. That part I didn't really understand. They all get into the van, the tour bus. You can see the scene is changing as they're turning to drive out. You can see Paperboy in the silhouette of socks and credit. Theory one, Paperboy speaking to Wiley was a on the surface demonstration of how much stardom he's reaching and the questions he's gonna need to ask himself going forward. But also beneath the surface, it's a reflection of his subconscious. I love how open but also slightly manipulative Wiley was as he interrogated both of them. There was a moment where he asked Ern, did you get made fun of for talking white? I said, where is this coming from? I thought it was a uh, very snappy, but smart for him to encapsulate what Ern is going through and how he had to navigate through life to be part of the universal group. Then when he turns to Paperboy and he's talking about what it means to be an artist and all that stuff and how they relate to heartbreak and his past, it reminded me of this quote that I shared on this channel before in a completely different context, but it works here. It goes, a good friend is someone who knows the song in your heart and sings it back to you when you've forgotten. When he was strumming on that guitar, I felt like he connected with Paperboy, which Paperboy's been lacking for a while. Giving that kid liquor made no sense, but the moment that they exchanged made a lot of sense for the stage that he's at. I almost wanted to think Wally was a ghost, but I said, girl, you're reaching too far with that one. I just think that he embodies Al's own subconscious and some of the questions he has going forward. Darius though, Darius for me is not just the friend that often gets neglected and maybe is up with the antics but down for the adventure. He also symbolizes missed opportunities. Maybe they wouldn't have found the phone like he alluded to if they just went with the blueprint, but it could have been a whole different experience for their last night in Budapest. Oh, before I forget, speaking on that, I love that most of this episode was shot in that office. Something about creating such an atmosphere, a storyline in one area. I always found that very masterful whenever movies or shows do that. Earn, I could write an essay about, but we're not gonna do that. All I'm gonna say is in the first 30 seconds of this episode, I saw growth. I was glowing for him because the glow up is real and it shows. Then to see him start to text a little salty, then retract and erase that, we all been there. Then to realize six days have passed and he's multiple texted and he got hit with a thumbs up emoji. The only thing worse than that is a K text. When someone hits you with a K text, that's a backhanded slap. I felt like this represented a switch, another mirror. There's a duality where Van was requiring certain things out of Ern before and now she doesn't care. Maybe it's because she sees past the facade and she doesn't want any parts of it. Maybe because she's on her own journey and discovering herself, she can't be involved in it. Who knows? We won't know until we see her in the next or the episode after next. There's just something very impressive about seeing Ern get up and stay up and be so responsible and be on his grind, but at the same time missing 
the little intricacies of life, like checking in on Paperboy. He's very calm and collected and detail oriented. It's just, I love to see it. Socks to me represents two things. If this episode is called Cancer Attack, he's the cancer and he's attacking within. Usually cancer is benign. You don't suspect it at first. You're not looking for it maybe where you should. And then it slowly starts to eat away and take away at things. When we realize that Paperboy wants his phone because he got his spark back, we realize that the cancer, aka socks, took away something from him that could be a potential for a brighter future. Cancer does that. The same way that it sometimes erases your past. Also having him infiltrated in this sense, why did you let him in? It just, this, I'm going to say it. Again, I feel like maybe this episode wasn't as deep as I'm trying to make it be, but Socks to me is giving Takashi energy. The same way Takashi's like this major troll and does the most, you can tell the loudest one in the room, a hit dog will holler. Anytime I heard anything about that case and how he snitched, why did all these bad men allow a kid with rainbow hair into their clique? Make it make sense. The same way they just calmly and coolly let this kid into the crew, I don't get it. And to not even question or ask him when he was acting a fool, and he dropped the end bomb halfway. I don't know about this at all. I'll share with you in predictions what I think is going to happen with him. <sighs> but he's an agent of chaos. He's very disruptive, very destructive. And I hope they don't dismiss his present anymore. And is just giving what a child's father would. I don't like saying baby daddy. I don't know. It's just not my thing. But if the roles were reversed or if Earn was keeping her on red and then hitting her with the thumbs up text, will we be so surprised? Cause that's his character. But since she's a woman and she's MIA and he's asking you, are you okay? It just seems a little strange, but maybe she's literally just doing her. It's just, I don't know. I don't want to read too much in that. I don't even like reading text cause I can't see them well. So I'm gonna just leave that where it is. My predictions for next week. This is based on if it's not another dream sequence like last week's episode, but if they don't go on a Darius adventure, they're going to really regret it. Cause every time you suggest something, I always wonder what would that plot line be like? Cause look what happened when Van followed Darius's idea. Paper boy is going to get to a point where he's tested again, either a creative block, character shifter change i just it seems like his heart's not in it anymore and he's in the motions or maybe he's doing it because this is who he thinks he needs to be now Ernest, he's going to continue to elevate and show up and show that he always was capable and maybe back home he just wasn't able to be as progressive and productive as he is now you know sometimes after the heavy context that they talk about it's good to have a light break from the cultural discussion so i don't i'm not mad at this episode i still really loved it just out of all the episodes last episode still stands to be my favorite i'd love to hear what you have to say so let me know down below a lot of times you guys comment things i completely missed or give me a different perspective. So I appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for making it to the end of this one. If you enjoyed, tap the like, subscribe for more. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.